Okay, we're going to go and uh, pick up chapter 7. And uh, some people may wonder why in the world chapter 7 wasn't in the original. Well, when I originally did this, we were flipping our instruction to video lectures that, that students looked outside of class on. First year, we changed it up when we came to chapter 7, so I did the actual live lectures in class and did not videotape them. And so we didn't get that, so I need to come back and do it. And thank, thankfully, a young lady, young Saudi lady, um, asked me and, and emailed me and said, what happened to chapter 7 with a little frowny face? So I decided I might better get her some chapter 7. I hope it's not too late. So we're going to try to do chapter 7 here this next week. Get them in. I hope it's, uh, I hope it's in time for you. And if not, I apologize, but yes, there are some missing pieces I need to go pick, pick up. Chapter 7 is one. Uh, there's a section in chapter 5, and then we'll finish up with chapter 12 and 13. We'll be done with that book, I believe. Okay, so let's do this. Chapter 7 is about proportions and how, how it has to do with, with um, geometry. And the very first one, you've got to know about proportions. Now, this is where we're going to wrap up your information and your knowledge of proportions. Okay, because you've been doing proportions since in the United States about fourth grade. The ratios and everything, we're going to get a bunch of vocabulary. We have a bunch of vocabulary, a lot of vocabulary on this one, so we're going to do that, and then uh, we'll do a, a lot of examples. What is a ratio? A ratio is simply a comparison of two quantities with each other using division, A divided by B. We're going to use some variables representing our quantities, a divided by B. 2 divided by 3. 2 is to 3. Okay, 2 thirds. 1 is to 7. 5 is to 9. Okay, so any kind of fraction that we have is basically a ratio. A proportion is an equation. A ratio is not an equation. It's simply a fraction. Okay, a proportion is an equation that sets two ratios equal to each other, such as A divided by B equals C divided by D. Okay? Two-fifths equals four-tenths. Two-thirds equals six-ninths. All right? Two ratios set equal to each other. The extremes are the numerator of the first ratio and the denominator of the second ratio of a proportion. So we've taken two ratios, we've set them up as a proportion, we want the numerator of the first ratio, the denominator of the second, and that is the, called the extremes. I don't know why they did that, that's just what they call them. So that would be A and D in this proportion. The means is the denominator of the first ratio and the numerator of the second ratio of a proportion. Well, that would be B and C. Denominator of the first, numerator of the second. That's called the means. Okay? Now, why do we need to know those? So that we can do cross products. Cross products are the product of the extremes set equal to the product of the means. Well, what's product mean? Means get a little, little, little out of hand here. The product is the multiplication result of the extremes. Multiplying A and D by each other set equal to the product of the means. The multiplication answer to the means, which is B and C. What does that look like? A times D, chong pong, equals B times C. B times C. Yes, that's how you solve a proportion for an unknown. Cross multiply and solve for the unknown. Those are our definitions. Make sure you understand them because we're going to be using them tremendously throughout this entire chapter on proportions and proportional uh, segments and similar um, polygons. Okay, here's some uh, sample problems on just setting up ratios we're going to do together, okay? So I put up here what these definitions look like. What is a ratio? It's a comparison of two numbers using division. Proportion is we're setting two of those comparisons equal to each other. Extremes, numerator of the first, denominator of the second, A and D. 
the means, the denominator of the first and the numerator of the second, B and C, cross products, the extremes, product of the extremes, equals the product of the means. A times D equals B times C. So that's what we're looking at there. And I'll just leave that up there for these examples. Now, what we're going to do is we're being asked, we're told that there's 182 girls in a class of students, you know, like a grade, and in the total, there are 305 students in that total grade. They would like to know the ratio of girls to students. Now, read the question, and it will tell you how to set it up. The first term or quantity mentioned is what the numerator will be. The second one mentioned will be the denominator. Okay, you got that? The first term or the first entity item mentioned is the numerator. The second mentioned or written is the denominator. So what's the first one written? Girls to students. Which one is the numerator? 182 girls divided by the number of students, 305. Okay? Now, we'd like to know the ratio of girls to boys. What is the ratio of girls to boys? Well, we don't have the boys. Well, I think it's fairly safe to make the assumption that if they're not girls, they must be boys. They may be dogs, cats, or something else. But we're going to assume that the students are people. Okay? And we're going to say that if they're not girls, they must be boys. So we would take 305, subtract 182, and we would have a total of, let's find out how many boys we have. 305, 182, subtract those two. We have 123. 123 boys. We want girls to boys. So what's the first number? Want the girls. 182 divided by 123 would be that ratio. Okay? Girls is mentioned first. Put it on top. It doesn't matter if it makes sense to you or not. That's what they want. Girls to students. Girls to boys. Put that on top. Here's another, just a simple one. Setting these up. Because if you don't set them up right, and then you start putting, making proportions out of them or equations, it is all wrong. Okay, because one of them is going to be on the extremes when it needs to be on the means. The other one's going to be on the means when it needs to be extremes. And your cross products are going to be wrong. Get it crossed up. It's not right. I have a rectangle with the width of 8 a length of 5. What is the ratio of the length to the width? What's mentioned first? Length. Mention that first. It goes in the numerator. Width is next. Oh, see? I messed up already. Length. Oh, we put them up here like this, but they want them. What? Length. 5, 2, 8. Wow. That's a little different, isn't it? Sort of label those backwards of what we normally would. Doesn't matter. However they're label them, that's how you need to do it. What's the ratio of the width to the length? The 8 divided by 5. Pay attention to how they're done. It doesn't matter. Up here, normally we would say that the longest one was the length. They didn't want to do that. Evidently, they're looking at it like this. Okay? And this is 8, and they want to call that the width, and they want to call this the length this way. Okay? Make sure you look at it, you read it, put what's labeled first. Now on this one, it's going to be just a little bit different. We have a model train, we have a real train, and we want to set up what is the scale factor. We'll talk about that on the next section. But we want to know what the ratio of the model to the real is. Notice that the model is in 18 inches and the real train is in feet. Now in order for us to set this up, we have to have them in the same unit of measure. Huh? Yeah. Put them in the same unit of measure. Otherwise, it's not going to work. We're not going to have a really good feel for what's going on. 18 inches, we can change the feet, or we can change the feet to inches. I propose we change this 
to inches. Well, how many inches are there? In, I mean, it changed 18 inches to feet. How many inches are there in a foot? There's 12, so we're going to take 18, divide by 12, and we get 1.5. All right? So now we can compare the model to the real. 1.5 to 48. Okay? Got it? What's the scale factor? 1.5 foot represents 48 feet. Understand? Okay. 0.5 to 48. All right? Well, that's how we would set that, set that ratio up. Get them in the same unit of measure. All right? Okay. Let's do some more samples.